one thing a Facebook whistleblower and the founder of the social media giant agree on, it's some form of regulation. But the question now is, what would that entail and is Congress up for the job? We'll get our bipartisan panel to share its voice on the matter. And is the Department of Justice doing parents and their kids an injustice when it comes to public education? Why several prominent Republicans are fired up and fighting back. And could Santa's sleigh be packed uh, a little lighter than usual this Christmas? We'll discuss that coming up. Hello and welcome to this Wednesday edition of News On. I'm Miranda Khan. As always, thank you so much for joining us. While Democrats try to reach common ground on spending measures, President Joe Biden continues to make the rounds targeting key states in an effort to drum up support for his multi-trillion dollar spending package. But the reception he received was, well, less than welcoming in Michigan. That's where dozens of leery buyers, if you will, stood by in protest yesterday, many of whom are looking at that pretty hefty price tag saying, well, it's too expensive, and also saying the money has to come from somewhere. People here, and this is where Biden is going to be speaking, just over there. Uh, but it's obviously a very excited crowd here. Uh, obviously not particularly popular and fans of Biden. Meanwhile, centrist Democrat Joe Manchin, who's become pretty well known, especially in recent weeks, for blocking this massive spending package, now says that he may consider raising the cost from his proclaimed one and a half trillion to as much as 2.2 trillion and in order to reach some kind of compromise. Again, progressives wanting three and a half children. Also, we have some breaking news coming into our newsroom. We're hearing reports that there is an active school shooting taking place right now in Texas. Reports seem to indicate that multiple people have been shot. This is at Arlington, Texas High School. I repeat, there is an active school shooting taking place in Texas. We're told multiple people have been shot at an Arlington, Texas high school. We'll continue to keep you updated on this breaking news story right here on Real America's Voice. Going back now to the economy, uh, we know that this money has to come from somewhere. Again, that's what a lot of these protesters are saying. But when it comes to your money, what does the economic forecast look like, especially as we approach the holiday season? Could we see fewer packages underneath the Christmas tree, right? That's what we're all wanting to know. Joining us now with the very latest to help break it all down is the founder and CEO of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Good to see you. Good morning. How are you? I am doing well. Not excited about this economic forecast. So there are a number of financial stories that have been making headlines today, uh, including this one uh, that we saw from Bloomberg. Christmas at risk as supply chain disaster only gets worse. That is the headline. Uh, you and I, whether it's been on a panel or a segment like we're doing right now, have been talking about supply and demand for quite a while. In fact, uh, here you can see some footage of Southern California's ports. Uh, if you haven't seen this, it really is a sight to behold. Uh, you can see this dramatic backlog of cargo ships. I mean, it, the sea is just littered with it and there aren't enough people manning this port. So the supply, in essence, is there, but there's not enough people to get those cargo ships, you know, processed through the port. Uh, so interesting. So, Melissa, you wrote your own article titled, Why? Panic Selling. What exactly is panic selling? So are we talking about the housing market? Are we talking about stocks and bonds? What specifically are you referring to in your article? Well, I'm talking about panic selling in general. It could be stock specific or the overall market. And what is panic selling? Panic selling is when people get scared and they sell. Sometimes it's profit taking in stocks for the market. Sometimes it's actually getting out of positions where people are down unexpectedly. Why? 
because they go to bed at night up in trains or in their investments and then they get up the next day and find that they've turned around or flipped around where they're actually down money or they're not up as much as they were the previous day. What creates something like an overnight sell-off, which we've seen actually several times in the last few weeks. We've seen it because of these fears of inflation. We've seen it because of the debt ceiling, which they push back now, this deadline's October 18th. You know, that's only a couple of days away. That's 12 days away. That's not that far out there. And Congress really still isn't dealing with that. Instead, they're on the Facebook hearing. I mean, you have to wonder really where are some of these priorities right now of our leaders. But I think Friday is a pivotal day for the market where you could possibly see more panic selling because we have a big jobs number coming out Friday. So the, the unemployment rate is supposed to come out and it's expected to be 5.1%. Let's just say that it's around there or better than expected. That would be positive for the market. Now, while the market doesn't always rally in economic news, I think that the market would be relieved right now at this point to have a good number. But the way things are shaping up, just show the picture of the points, we really are having problems getting people back to work. Part of the issue is some of these employer, uh, individual employer mandates, which the Biden administration has been pushing on people, our, our private companies, to put these mandates in. We've seen that with the healthcare system in New York. You've seen that overall with the teachers uh, unions here in New York State. It's a problem right now. People are choosing to not work rather than get vaccinated for whatever reason. So the reality is we could see a higher than expected jobs number on Friday morning. What if that number is close to 6%? That would be very, very bad. There's still way too many people out of work. That's why you're having the backup of the ports and going into Christmas. Yeah, if you wanna make sure that you have presents for everybody that you buy presents for, I'd say don't wait until the very, very last minute. I mean, Columbus Day is Monday, which typically there are, will be sales for Columbus Day. I actually am going to take advantage of those sales myself to make sure I have gifts for my family. Yeah, and, and that's what I was going to ask you, because for the people at home and, and layman's terms, you know, we've talked about it before, the average household uh, doesn't even have $500 in savings right now. So the idea of stocks and bonds may be out of reach for people. They're just looking to put food on the table and gas in their car. And again, they're worried about having presents uh, for their kids underneath the Christmas tree. Melissa Armo, uh, we will look forward to that jobs report coming out Friday. As always, thank you for your time. And we're going to talk about more about the debt ceiling. Also, we're going to have an update on that school shooting that I mentioned taking place in Texas. Arlington's mayor is saying that at least two high schoolers from Timberview High School are injured. We're going to try to bring you live coverage of that coming up right here on News On. We'll be right back.